<laughs> Hi, I'm the Magpie, and this video, no, Monday, this Monday, I wanted to do a bit of a palette cleanser, like, so, because I've been doing so many, like, Cosio keyboard videos and shenanigans like that, in parallel to all of the Magpie pedal stuff, link is in the description, that I also have to do, and I'm really excited about showing you, but I wanted to take a Monday to just explore something completely different. So this is the Metallophone, which just arrived from my friend Analog Weapon, the constant co-host in my podcast, and also who I run magpiestuff.com together with, where if all goes well, I will put up all the sounds from this as a sample pack. Because this is, I don't know if I already said it, because I'm blanking out. But this is the Metallophone, which is a toy from 1965 by Mattel, so that alone is kind of cool, but it's a record player. So you have these tiny baby records, and I, I cut up a slit here to, to take one out because, you know, it's got some really quirky packaging, which is kind of, kind of funny. With that guy. And what you do is you simply stick one in here on the side. And you have to like lift up thing and then you uh, of course have to plug in batteries it's all coming apart let's have a look on the inside <laughs> right away you know you have a little bell of sorts it actually took me forever to pick it apart so uh, that was not very fun I wanted to show you you know you hear it here in the phone from the record so this thing which runs on the record just goes through a tube and then out through a tube and you hear the record and there are so many discs like maybe some of you even have some of the, these discs i only have six talking sides and they are not equally child okay boy that hurt but it tasted pretty good oops i've got to go now they're calling me for lunch fuzzy only i'm fuzzy everywhere That's annoying. Like it's <laughs> so the issue I had with this when it arrived is that the rubber band was not attached to the, the spinny thing on the motor and it just came off again. So it, it definitely seems to be a reoccurring issue. But as you could hear briefly there, it sounds very sped up. So as soon as you actually get it in place, I think they never really tweaked or maybe modern batteries are just way too strong, so it just runs super, super fast. Like, but, I mean, the toy from 1965, maybe not it's supposed to be amazing and glorious. But you could at least hear it, even though it was a bit high pitch. But my idea now is to get rid of that. I actually put this one on myself. <laughs> it's from a stethoscope, which is kind of cool. Just the perfect size of a tool. But I'm gonna take this wonky microphone that showed up in the trash and put it here, tape it, and also see if I can do a speed control for the motor to, to bring it down a bit in speed. And then we're just gonna listen to it. If you give me four hours, we'll have been able to put it back in place. It's actually really finicky to put this back onto it also because you have to line these two up, like the control things. And I don't know, both of these are just sort of on, but only that one pushes down the pickup, which is a really silly, wonky little tubey pickup thing. So, I mean, it's ridiculously cool but ridiculously wonky at the same time. Record player phone. <laughs> so the idea being that you like talk with the record, I guess. So the record says something, but at that speed, you're gonna have a hard time having a conversation. So let's do as much surgery as possible. And then I will be back here. Cause I gotta solder. Okay. So, at the moment, at least before I started the camera, 
I have it in a state of functioning now, so we can actually hear it. And it truly is kind of magical, actually, because seemingly every one of these discs has like four tracks per side. And based on like starting it and starting it over and stuff, it like my theory is that it locks on to one trace and then avoids the other one. So it's very like tight on it here, but maybe there's like a starting line for each four of these <laughs> tracks. So whenever it like jumps back, it can jump to one of those four. I actually don't really know, but it's kind of magical with this one snapping back in place, like whoopsh, this tube driven pickup. It's very, very peculiar. So I can show you real quickly. <laughs> Plebeians. I'm a kitty cat. Take a minute. One of my whiskers is stuck in the phone. Do you know how many whiskers I have? One, two, seven, forty-two, sixteen hundred billion. I have three whiskers. I have four. Or I could... So that was the kitty cat. And then... Alright, it struggles. And that's very much based on where you put this. It just seems. So I don't know if you're supposed to be able to move it and stuff, but that really affects the I mean it's it's belt driven, so it's all about getting it to actually drive this disc that it hasn't been I don't know if it's been used ever, honestly. That's not the kitty cat. At least. I'm coming! I'm coming! <laughs> what? What? <laughs> My name is Clavian. So, all of these different things, I'm still just on the first record, so hopefully I'm gonna be able to record as much as possible, but it very much seems as though it's struggling more when it lands in, in one of them than when it lands in another, and you very much seem to be able to move it a bit from side to side and alleviate some of the pressure, I guess, that way, so... Very peculiar science behind it. Like, I, I'm mighty impressed for what it is. Just because th this one is just loosey-goosey. So that one just snaps back. But it also means that I can't really do anything about the fact that I have to press it in. Because that one is what sort of snaps it back in place. But, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's get trippy while we can. Because why not? I think every opportunity that presents itself to get trippy.
I mean, yeah, you tell me what I mean. See you next Monday. Do drugs. Have a great afternoon. Enjoy yourself. <laughs>